and we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time that you have taken to sacrifice after whatever's going on, don't even worry about it, that you have taken your time to share with us in this home-going celebration service for our dad, your friend, family, brother, not aunt, but uncle, cousin, friend, whatever name you have for him, even let's say loved one. How about that? So we greet you. We thank you. We welcome you. And this is going to be a time to uh, enjoy. I know there's sorrow, there's pain, there's all things going on, but we, we just know that all is well, all will be well. And we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time. So we're going to get ready. And um, we know as uh, one name we know he's called, Butch will be proud. He will be happy. He's already happy. He's already gone. He's already gone to that place that we live to get. So we we, we just honor, honor the Lord for this time to make it possible just to share this moment when other people couldn't. So we thank the Lord first. So, so Lord God, sometimes we don't know what to say and we just turn to you. We don't know what to do. This is the case today. We turn to you who is our strength during this time of home going. You are the giver of life in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who is the source of eternal life. You also understand death. You also know life. So we trust you today, this moment, this time. And we believe that you make no mistakes. Father, you know our grief. Give us peace and comfort. Dry our tears, soothe our pain, suppress our sorrows. We know of the cross and the death of your son, Jesus, the living Christ. We know too many of the empty tombs. How thankful we are that Jesus rose on the third day, never to die again. We cling to his promise because we live. You shall live awesome. Thank you. Dear Father, for his victory over death and for the grace of love that share that victory with us. Six o'clock right now. It's Comfort is in our loss. Okay, let me see. Keeping our trust in our Savior and strengthen our resolve to live for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Gonna pass it on to big little sister Cole. How about that? You all know Nick. Let me let me try this. Nicole Ebony Adwele. Did I get that right? You can handle it from here. Purse Phillips. Thank you. So we're going to do two scriptures um, from the Old and the New Testament. And actually, we're going to have one of his nieces read the first scripture, and that's Candace Michelle Milstead. I'm going to see you from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 15 through 18. Yay, and we are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Amen. 
First Thessalonians chapter five, verses fourteen through eighteen. You don't have me there. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among themselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In every case, we give thanks. And today we are here to give thanks for the life and the blessings that my father has bestowed upon all of us. And... We thank you all for sharing with us. We have a song. One moment. We have a song from a cousin. Um, there you go. And I got to make sure she's on because she just said, get her back. We're getting it together. It's a different times. Um, I got a few messages saying that the um, ID is showing invalid. And so she hasn't been able. Oh, she's getting on now. So if you all could be patient one moment, Marquita is going to sing a song for us. Why don't we play some music? We'll hear some music until she can get on. She says she's logging in now. From daddy's playlist. So these are songs that we picked from our father's playlist that he enjoyed. So while we get Marquita on for her to sing, enjoy as well. Thank you.
Marquita has joined us. And she's ready. So I have one of his nie nieces, Marquita Antoinette Henderson. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay. Hope you all can hear me okay. All right. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I am free. His eye is on the spell. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marquis. So next we have is um, the obituary reading. And so since we didn't get the program out via email to everyone, um, I'm going to read it so that you all have at least that part. And then we can send the emails of it or send it out to you in your home. Paris Sinclair Purse. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. God, seeing that you were getting weary, did what he knew was best. He came and sat beside you and whispered, come home and rest. Obviously, you chose to listen 
and you breathe your final breath. On Wednesday, January 6, 2021, after a prolonged yet undefeated struggle with many complications, Harris Sinclair Purse the third, answered the call from our Heavenly Father and entered into his eternal rest. Harris Sinclair III was born on May 26 in 1944 to the late Paris Purse Jr. and Philistine Bullock. In Washington, D.C., he received his formal education in the District of Columbia at L Lucy Stowe Elementary School. Taft Junior High School, and then he graduated from Coolidge High as the class of 1962. Shortly after, he enrolled at Wilberforce State College. He studied there for two years. While there, he met and married Anne Elise Purse. Life was seeming as it was starting to be a dream come true until the U.S. Army stepped in in 1966 with unavoidable draft papers and he found himself five months later, distant from home in Vietnam until 1968. At the end of his two year tour, he received an honorable discharge as well as an honorable medal given to all servicemen who fight at a time of crisis, saving our lives. At the, he worked for, oh, excuse me, he returned home to a chart out a course for his life, a life that challenged him considerably. He worked for PMP Enterprises as a co-owner of Bullock's Gasoline Station and Philistine's Boutique. Water for me to hot water in the show. As a landlord for the PMP Enterprises properties, and he worked in the DC school system. After an extended period of time and a change in his relationship status, Paris connected with a special friend, Darlene Reeves. A few years later, Paris decided to relocate to Florida. During his Florida residency, he married longtime friend, Sharon Purse, became and remained an employee of the Solid Waste Authority until he retired, I'm sorry, until he received an on-the-job injury which prevented him from returning to work. Some years later, because he had already become an active member in the Narcotics Anonymous Recovery Program, he pursued training to qualify him to become a counselor in the behavioral habit, habitat of Palm Beaches and the Genesis House. Paris continued his work stay there until his mother became terminally ill and needed his attentive care. Moving once again, he returned back to Washington, D.C., his roots. His charisma, his simplistic know-how, afforded him the opportunity to obtain a position as a concierge in the Winterwork slash Corp of CSAM. He continued to work in the capacity, regardless of his various surgeries and illnesses, until he could no longer do so. At the time of his transitioning, Paris had celebrated 32 years in recovery program. Surviving and remembering him are his, me, daughter, Nicole, four sons, Darren Hawkins Purse, wife, Shannon, Michael Purse, wife, Tina, Maceo Vaughn Purse, wife, Brenda, Paris Woodard Adewale Purse. He has one sister, Jacqueline Milstead, and a brother-in-law, Lyndon. 23 grandchildren. Bear with me. Jakaya, and her husband's name is Jean. <laughs> sorry. Then we have, after Jakaya, I lost my place. I'm sorry. Darren, Michael, Malik, rest in peace. Sevia, Ashanti, Tynese, Kamaris, rest in peace. Amari, 
Nubian, Kimaris, Ayana, Nazim, Warren, Alisa, Kyrus, Nianki, Jaden, Olivia, Kamai, Emmanuel, Nikhil, and Naeem. I'm gonna take a breath. Six great grandchildren, Deja, Amari, Amani, Ayara, Casey, and Kaylee Nicole. Special friends and family, Jean Martin, Kenneth Long, and a cast of thousands. I won't go on. So that concludes the reading of the obituary. At this time, we would like to open the floor to his friend, Jean Martin, so that we can open the group meeting to celebrate in his recovery and allow for you all to share in his legacy as well. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Gene. I'm an addict. Can you hear me? We hear you. Good. Um, Hi, Gene. Hi, Gene. First, I'd just like to take a moment of silence for everybody that needs it. Paris was a very special person to me. Um, our, our relationship lasted well over the entire time I've been in Narcotics Anonymous, over 26 years. We started as friends, we became sponsor and sponsee, and we ended as what I like to say family. Um, we've shared a lot of good times, we've shared some bad times, but right now, I just want to focus on a couple of good moments we had together. About eight or nine years ago, I visited Paris up in D.C. And um, of course, I did the tourist thing. You know, I went through the whole mall. Unbeknownst to me, he did, he did it with me. And later on that evening, we both sitting there dead tired. He <laughs> told me he lived there. And he had never done that before. <laughs> yeah, never done that. <laughs> that was kind of astonishing to me. And um, you know, that that that's the kind of relationship we had. I, I I remember very early in my recovery, I went to him complaining about getting these job time jobs I was getting. And he asked me very bluntly, why do you apply for? Them? <laughs> Well, my answer was my my skills are not okay. He said, well, go get your skills better. So I went back to college. I had two graduations. Paris attended both of them. Both of them. Um, I think he very, was very instrumental in me being the person that I am professionally and personally. Um, I'm going to miss him physically. I'm going to miss him tremendously physically. I'm never going to miss him spiritually because we're connected spiritually and we'll always be. Um, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about what I'm going to say for the last three weeks and I, I wanted not to be emotional and I, I'm getting there at that place. Um, I just want want you to know that I'm I'm happy you were a part of my life. I'm happy that you will remain a part of my life. Um, I'm gonna miss you. I'm just gonna miss you tremendously. I am going to miss you. And I love you, brother, and that's all I got right now. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Jean, um, for the those who had signed up, do you have an order? And if so, they can start going. 
No, I, I, I didn't have an order. Whoever signed up, please feel free. Okay. So just unmute your mic or raise your hand, and then mommy will unmute your mic, and then you can continue at that point. Because once she sees your hand raised, she can let you start to speak. Okay, next is going to be Ken Long. Ken, you can unmute yourself. Uh, oh, I see. Hello. You. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Unfortunately, as we have been brought together by my brother Butch, <laughs> he always has a way of bringing us together one way or another. <laughs> And this time it happens to be, we have to say goodbye for now. But I would like to say, Butch has been nothing no more than a brother that biologically we were never connected, but who knows? Going down the line of bloodline, it could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And the simple fact happens to be he is my brother. I love him as a brother, always will. Truly, he will be missed. The last time I saw him, I was in DC at a workshop. Who picks me up from the airport? Butch. Who takes me out to lunch? Butch. Who makes sure that I get back to the airport? Butch. As usual, Butch and I have had good times together bad times together, in different times together, and it has been a long journey, but one that has been a bonded journey that will be with me for the rest of my life. And fortunately enough, he has his legacy left behind. Even though he's physically gone, but he is in our hearts, in our minds, and in our memories. And to Nicole, Harris, Darren, Maceo, and Mike. He loved you. He loved you dearly. You happen to be his legacy. And I'm quite sure that you will do a very good job of carrying on the family's traditions. But then, there happened to be your own family traditions, which he became a part of. But as we all have gathered here today, I would like to say one thing that Butch was an amazing person. If he liked you, he liked you. If he didn't, he didn't. He did. <laughs> Butch was no phony person whatsoever. No, he was. But if he liked you, you had someone on your side that was truly had your back. And for that, I love him and always will. And I need to stop speaking before I start breaking down. Thank you. Next will be Hazel. Hey, family. I just want to say I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> I uh, was fortunate. I met I met Paris when I first got clean in South Florida, and then shared instrumental in my recovery early on. And I knew. 26 later, years later, I ended up in D.C. The first person I connected with when I got here was parents. He opened his arms to me, he opened his house to me, helped me get settled, and you know, told me I was, I'd be okay, and I was, I was scared. I didn't know anything, and know nobody, and so he, he didn't take me on the, uh, the walking tour, Gene. He took me on the car tour. <laughs> Told me this didn't used to be there. That didn't used to be there. I mean, you know, he 
he took me through the whole gentrification of the city, you know what I mean? And um, as time went on, he took me to, had me hanging out with him at the, the VA hospital, cussed all the damn people out of there. I said, Lord, 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 how you expect for these folks to help you if every one of them you got to cuss out? <laughs> he cussed everybody out. <laughs> I'd be trying to apologize for him. No, no, don't apologize. They know what the heck I'm talking about. I mean, he'd go on and on. And on. Lord have mercy. I said, Paris, P, P, we can't keep doing this. You know, and um, he was just, uh, he was my friend. He was my friend, man. Uh, I, uh, I can remember uh, vividly last year, he, um, he helped me celebrate my recovery by giving me my 25th year coin at my anniversary. He came out and he uh, gave a very moving speech about um, yeah. it. He was talking about how one day at a time, all you needed to do was just do this thing one day at a time. And he was, he told folks he was on 25 medications at the time. He, uh, still clean he was doing his thing still battling you know so, I think I talked to him about a couple of weeks ago before he died he said uh, um, well my daughter told me I needed to call you I was like well heck you should just want to call me just because it's you butch <laughs> what if I saw him you know or the calling of that area, and then I had a long talk. He kind of told me, he said, listen, you know, I'm a, he kind of like Frank Sinatra, you know what I'm saying? He always did things his way, you know, you can never talk him out of nothing, you know, because he always, he had his mindset, and uh, that's just who he was, you know, and all the time I always had to, had to honor that, you know, I had to respect that, you know, about him. I went to a lot of places in DC with him, you know, because I didn't, I didn't know any place. I didn't know anything and I just tagged along with him. He was my brother, you know, he showed me nothing but uh, unconditional kindness, he even came out. He liked, he liked dogs, but he ended up getting a cat, right? I know I had got the cat, but he liked dogs. He'd come out and see me and Toby, you know, and he'd hang out with me and the big dog. And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm gonna miss him. I'm really, really, really going to miss my friend. I knew he was there for me and I was there for him. It's a little hard, but uh, I'll, I'll miss his spirit most of all. I'll miss his spirit, I'll miss his spunk. I miss his fighting spirit, you know, because he'd have he'd have things happen to him, but you know what? He'd always come back. He'd always fight back. I always knew that about him. He always had this fighting spirit where he would always bounce back. You know, I don't know. If I said anything about him, it's the fact that he had he had this kind of stick to itiveness about himself, you know. And uh, I just want to say on this platform, P, I miss you. And I love you unconditionally. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Hazel. Next. Okay, I guess I'll do like I'm taught to do, call on you. <laughs> Jerry, you feel like sharing? And you have to unmute. How you doing, family? It's good to hear and see some of these faces I haven't seen in, gosh, at least, at least 12 years. So it is like awesome to see you guys. You know, um, 
it, I was just sitting here thinking when 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 Gene and Hassel was talking, it's like, you know, when I met Paris, it was the 80s. Oh my God. I think it was 88, 89, something like that. I'm too old to even remember back that far nowadays, but it was way back when. And uh, you know, we just like we hit it off as friends, you know, um, but it was a short time after he says, Hey, can you can you be my sponsor? I said, Let be your sponsor. Man, you sure you want to do that? He said, Yeah. And boy, the road was on from there. <laughs> but I tell you what. I don't know, you know, a lot of times we hear these days, you know, people talk about love in such a uh, uh um flippant way, you know, without the seriousness of what it had. And, you know, when I say truly, I can truly say I, I love that dude, man. We was like, you know, we started out this, I mean, we talked about, you name it. I mean, you can't, <laughs> stuff that even today you can't talk about, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But that ability to be so honest and open with each other, you know, and, um, and, and that ability that, that, you know, that N.A. gave us to be men because he was like me when we both, you know, we wasn't that much different far apart, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, we wasn't men when we got here. We thought we was. We was old enough to be. We had kids, you know, wives, kids, and all that stuff. But being a real man, we really didn't even know what that meant, you know, how to be somebody and share what you really felt and be a part of a be a part of a relationship with somebody else you know so um even being his sponsor he helped me to be a better me you know and uh gosh over the years <laughs> over the years you know it's it just so much so much that that went on you know and and, and the things we just did to I mean, just some simple stuff like going bowling. You know, we used to go bowling all the time, you know, in those days or out to just have coffee together and just sit and talk and, 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 and be together. But, you know, it's just truly a bond that you cannot even begin to, uh, to, to understand that most people can't understand unless they've been in this, in, been in this program, you know, but as a, as an individual, I don't know. I could always depend on them. You know, if I needed someone to to be there, and I don't mean be there for you know to. I mean someone to be there emotionally, which was something I didn't have when I first came here, and something I didn't have for a long time, and didn't get from a lot of places. But you know, it was a sense of closeness, and a sense of sincerity that whatever it was going on with me, that he truly cared about it you know, and was willing to share and be a part of it and go with it with me, you know, so I miss him. I've missed him for a long time, being so far away, you know, it's been a long time, and I got to talk to him, that's the last time I was way, you know, it's been a couple of years now, but um, he never leaves my heart, he never will, you know, what we have shared is always be here, so, thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Jerry. Spanky? Yeah, my addict. Spanky, uh, Deloach. Uh, my first thing uh, in the order, I like to uh, send my and give my condolences to Sharon and the kids and the grandkids and the great grandkids, you know. Uh, so my condolences uh, to the family. And just like my brother Jerry shared, it's good to see all of you guys that I know uh, here on this platform, as well as uh, a couple of the kids. I know they might not remember me, but I remember them. Uh, you know, um, Paris and I had a very special adult relationship, I guess that's the way I would like to uh, classify. Cause we talked mm -hmm. about everything and in anything, you know, um, 
And, you know, when I, it, it sends chills, you know, over my body that's thinking about the brother. Uh, I uh, came to uh, South Florida in 1999 uh, through the uh, VA hospital. I was employed with the VA. And uh, although I was in recovery, I had about eight years, going on nine years clean when I came down to uh, West Palm Beach. And it was three brothers that I met from DC that uh, I automatically bonded with. And that was Quentin, Tommy, and Paris. And those three brothers uh, reeled me in and hugged me. And today, rest in peace to all three of them because all three of them has passed on uh, since I've been here. And, you know, I, I can, you know, I think about Quinn with his cool dressing pine pots. I think about Tommy with his cool dressing hot. And we argued every day of the year. Every, I mean, and we talked every day. And Paris said, Spanky, just leave him alone. That's Tommy for you, you know. And when um, Paris and I, you know, being a, a, a veteran myself, um, being uh, working for the VA, as well as being in recovery, you know, I had, you know, quite a few uh, uh, talks with him, you know, from the military, from the VA, you know, and in recovery. And, you know, I was thinking about the, the times that I seen him um, since he had his transplant, you know, he never gave up, you know, a lot of us know Paris, you know, even when he was sick, he wouldn't let you know he was sick. Uh, when he was feeling bad, he wouldn't let you know he was feeling bad. I probably seen him uh, four to five times um, since he uh, moved back up to DC, you know, and I'm from Northern Virginia and I worked at the VA up in DC. And that's one of the things that we had in connection and in common. And we got to talking and when we would talk, I never went on the tour with him <laughs> to, to DC, but I seen him once in DC since he's been back up. And I seen him four, maybe four times since he moved back up when he would come down for the uh, uh, yearly or uh, annually uh, NA convention. And we would always sit down and talk and drink coffee and, and the most important thing I remember when Tommy passed and we had to go over there and, you know, take care of everything along with Sharon and a few other uh, addicts. And I, I mean, it, you know, I have so many great memories of and, and he was so instrumental into my recovery, although we didn't talk every day, uh, but, but we did talk, um, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe every other month and, you know, Gene would always keep me updated on, you know, how he was doing and Sharon would always keep me, you know, uh, informed on him. And, you know, I can say, you know, between them three brothers, uh, man, I, I can truly say uh, between Quentin and Tommy and Parrish, you know, they really, uh, we really had adult you know, man to man, like Jerry was saying, we could talk about anything. And, and, and when we would talk, sometimes we would go back home. You know, we ran some of the same streets, some of the same blocks, some of the same, uh, y'all know them houses, you know, some of the same corners. And, we, and then we would talk, man, and, and have memories of uh, our upbringing and, you know, how we play sports and, you know, just about anything that was possible that two men could sit down and have uh, a real hard to hard conversation. So it would be remiss if, if I couldn't make this, uh, I couldn't come on and say something nice about my brother and, and, and to see all of you uh, uh, people that is on this platform. So, you know, it, it's, it, it brings, like I said, tears on my body and tears in my eyes, but um, I, I, I know, you know, uh, times of difficulty for all of us, I'm quite sure, 
that we all have them in our hearts and in our spirits, you know, and, um, you know, that's, that's a great thing to know that, and unconditionally, someone just said it, it might have been, I don't know who said it, uh, uh, Jerry, I'll say, you know, if he was your friend and he liked you, he had your back. You know, mm -hmm. that's one thing I can say. If he liked you, but if he didn't give a fuck about you, oh, excuse me, um, y'all, but if he didn't care for you, you know, you wouldn't get nothing out of him. And, and uh, But if he liked you, man, he would really sit down and give you some uh, some guidance and, you know, uh, give you some uh, some hope, man, that, you know, we, you know, we, our lives have changed and revolved and it didn't change over time. It was gradually and grace and gracefully that our lives have made the significant changes that we have made. So, you know, I, I just wanted to say, you know, condolences to the family and the kids and, you know, uh, you know, God bless you and, you know, all of you guys are in my prayers. Thank you. I'm, a, uh, I'm spanky. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. I don't see hands, so I'll just continue calling on folks. Just remember, I love you anyway. Um, Larry. Sharon, I, hey, Sharon, I see Reggie's hand is up, isn't it? Oh, good. I didn't see it, but go for it. Reggie? Hey, I'm an addict. My name's Reggie. Thanks, Banky. Um, wait. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Okay. I said I'm an addict. My name is Reggie, and I uh, only came on here out of love and respect. You know, I didn't have a relationship like y'all had with Parrish, but our common bond. This what is him party at a convention, and I was busy, and I got to hug him and talk to him for a few minutes, and I was off and running, and then boom, everybody disappear and, and I just didn't. So I'm here tonight just to say, man, I love that guy, man. He was one of the coolest cats, man. And and the thing about Parrish, you know, Tommy would start a fight in a minute. I never seen him fight Parrish though. I never seen that. But Tommy, man, he'll get you in the corner or get you in the car, man, and hold you hostage. I don't think he did that with Parrish. And I didn't know that he was a veteran until my sponsor Spanky told me. You know, and, and I'm a veteran. Man, I love addicts. Man, I love veterans, man. And, and if you're a, a, vet, a veteran, you know, in recovery, man, that is the bomb. It's, it's a special thing. You know, I got I got to uh, sign off after I finish sharing. I'm, I'm picking up uh, 33 years, man. And that's amazing. And I, I just also want to let everybody know who can hear my voice and see me. I love you. You know, if I if I did something wrong to you or said something, man, forgive me. Life is short. You know, I, I'm 63. I'll be 64 soon. You know, and I'm struggling health-wise. So, you know, with that, I end with, man, I love you. I wish everybody the best. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak about a man that I knew, man, who changed recovery and so many other lives in a positive way. Thank you all for letting me share. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. All right, Lenora, you have to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. Uh, my condolences to the family. I'm really grateful to be on this uh, celebration of life because Paris was truly a friend of mine. And I was thinking, I knew exactly what I was going to say when I shared about Paris, and it's a memory. And it, uh, it demonstrates the kind of friend he was. Paris called me once, he was coming down from DC and I said I'd be at a convention in Fort Lauderdale. He met me there. The convention turned out to be, um, because of vaping, it kind of closed down early. But I found out soon later that, uh, earlier than, than later than soon or whatever, Paris didn't want to go to convention. 
parents needed me to ride with him, his car, he and his car, and, and I and mine, across the West Coast to see Bob Meyer. Bob Meyer was infirmed at the time and now living with his daughter. We got in the car and went across Florida to meet Bob. And when we arrived at his daughter's beautiful home, Doris was there. It, uh, and the visit was complete with dinner and Doris made her famous banana pudding. But when, Bob, but when Paris opened the door and Bob was on the other side in a wheelchair, he lit up like a Christmas tree. He was so happy to see his friend. He grabbed Bob and we all hugged and he immediately took Bob to another side of the house where they could just sit alone. Bob didn't speak, but his eyes lit up as well. And it was the most beautiful moment that I, I can ever recall. It was true friendship and a friendship that was born in recovery and flourished in recovery. We had a wonderful time. Uh, we saw Bob another time before he passed, but that initial visit when, when Bob was not doing well, did Paris's heart, you know, real good. He was, he was so happy, so pleased. You know, he was at peace because he got to see his friend. I'll never forget that. Then we all got in our separate cars and took the long trek back to the wet, to the East Coast. And it was well worth it because I never forgot that. I often checked, I often checked on Paris and I remember once I kept calling him here and there and I couldn't get him. I became very concerned. So I called Jean, I said, Jean, I, I can't get in touch with Paris and neither could he. And then he got in touch with Hazel who found him and he wasn't doing well. So I'm glad we had that kind of connection. Uh, and he recovered from that. He, he did okay after that. He, he came to Florida soon after that. I'll miss Paris. I'll miss the kind of friend he was because he didn't only do that just for Bob. He came down and stayed with Tommy. I remember Tommy called me, wanted something to eat, making demands, even in his uh, final days. And uh, Paris was there and I brought him dinner. He was so happy just to sit with his friend. Just sit, that's all he did, just stay with Tommy for a while. I, I know that uh, when he entered the gates, that uh, Q and Bob and Tommy and, and, and so many more were waiting for him for that great meeting in, in the sky, without a doubt. So it was an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to know Paris. I feel fortunate to have been his friend uh, and uh, I'm gonna miss a connection with him. That's without a doubt, but I can always talk to him. He's just on the other side. And thank you for listening to me. He was some kind of friend. Thanks. Thank you, Lenora. Thank you. Hey, Sharon, I got a message. Somebody's trying to get you let in. Oh. Maybe. They're in the waiting room. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I got to tell them to just be, be patient because I don't even see a waiting room thing right this minute. I'm looking. Let's see how I go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Good deal. Thank you, Hazel. All right, so I was, did he leave? Okay, anyone else? All right, I'm gonna say iPhone WP mates at gmail.com. Would you like to share? Hi there. Um, I live in James Place and um, I can say just how much we like Mr. Paris. I mean, he's just just a very special person and he will be dearly missed he will be dearly missed and um i also want to say that i feel the special moment of hearing all the people who have spoken and their connection and friendship has been really truly very very moving very moving so I know that I can't see, you know, who else in the building is on Zoom, but I, I know other people felt 
the way I feel that he will be dearly missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wait a minute, people. Mm. You are going to do two things at the same time. Okay. Tiara, would you like to share? Got to unmute yourself, T. I had to just step out of the room that I was in. I'm finishing up at work. I love you, love you, love you to the moon and back. Um, he will be dearly missed. Um, he was an instrumental part of my recovery, that's for sure. Um, I'm not going to take up too much time. I love you and I'll miss him. Thank you. Thank you, T. Dominique. Hi, how are you all? Um, I'm most definitely going to miss Mr. Purse. I worked with him at James Place. And when I say my first meeting, it was just awesome. And he was so always on time. And it was so funny because he'll call at 11 if he will wake up and wasn't feeling it himself. And he say, I'm sorry, I may be a few minutes late. And I'm like, that's fine, Mr. Purse. And even if he was late, he would come in the next day extra early. Like, you was here. And you can leave. So I could just feel the love from him and his family. And he's definitely going to be missed. And it's just an honor that I was able to meet Nicole. And then I did meet Darren a few times. But he's such a great man. So he will be missed. And I thank y'all for sharing him with us. Thank you, Dominique. Hey, Ma. Okay, iPhone, go for it. Hey, 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 Ma, how you doing? Hey, I, hey, hey, everybody. Did I, what did I miss, Ma? Did I miss uh, too much? I've been on about five minutes. I've been hearing talking. Is this the meeting? No, going you're on right now? where you're supposed to be. Would you like to share? Um, no. Okay, that's <laughs> the thing. All right. I'm good. Thank you all. Thank you all for, for showing up. Appreciate y'all. For my dad, love y'all. God bless. That's really all I got to say. Okay. I love you, Ma. Love you, Ma. You too, Paris. A whole bunch. All right. All right. <laughs> Patrice, how about Hi. you? Hi. I'm just getting in. So um thank you for for the invitation. Um God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference that will be done. I cannot change um, and I would not change um, a moment of the journey that brought me, that crossed paths with um, Butch and Sharon and the sharing of, <laughs> of, of feeling a part of your, of your family, um, the years, oh gosh, it's been a lot of years. <laughs> it's been a lot of years. I, my favorite book story is I attended a conference in DC a few years back, maybe about three or four years ago. And um, he allowed me to stay with him and he allowed me to use his car because I didn't know how to maneuver the uh, public transportation system to attend this this conference and driving me to this across town wherever it was the the trip across town from his home to the to the center to the home where this conference was being held he had stories to tell every step along the way every building all the years of, of uh, Sharon and his life in DC had, there was some, something that triggered a memory and he told the story. 
And when it was my turn uh, and my son asked, was he a teacher too? I said, well, he taught me that day because when it was my turn to drive and I didn't think, oh my God, don't wreck this car. Don't, you know, don't get a scratch on it. Don't get lost. Don't be late. All of that was in my head. And whenever I thought I can't do this, a, a memory, a story, a landmark, would keep me going in the right direction. And I got to know DC in those two days in a way that stick, sticks with me. And, and, the, and the greatest part of that is that my friend Butch um, allowed me that introduction to um, the, the DC streets that I'll, I'll never forget. And I can never repay his, his kindness and generosity and what I see and, and the impact that he had on my son, who calls him Uncle Butch. Um, and, you know, it, it's ancestral blood. It's the spiritual blood. It's, you know, it's not, it's the brother from another mother blood. Um, and he gave me a call for, you know, Happy New Year. Um, it was a text, you know, I hope you're doing well you know, like a few days before the new year. And, you know, that's how we communicate. It would be like, you know, happy birthday, happy new year. I hope you're doing well. Not a big deal. Just knowing that that connection was strong and to get the news that he transitioned. I just, and to see the love that his, his family shows him, especially his, um, his daughter going to take care of him, Nicole, oh my gosh, that's such a blessing to not be alone, you know, in that time. It's such a blessing to have, to be in the company of someone who cares. Um, my, my own dad um, transitioned um, shortly before um, the news about Butch. And so it was, I was already in that mourning stage, that that grieving stage. And it was like, well, okay, God, bring it, because it can't be any worse than what I've been going through already. And I was just happy for him to um, no longer be in on this side, you know, that there's there I, I have to trust and believe that there's glory on the other side and that the work that he had to do here, he he stayed here long enough to get it done. And that anything else, uh, that's between him and God. That's between him and his higher power. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that ease into recovery um, that I had, um, that the escort that I had into seeing the need that I had for a life of examination and discipline. And I, you know, not perfection. Um, progress, and I could, I could, um, I counted myself lucky to be um, in a circle, in your circle, Sharon, in your um, ever widening circle of people who care. And I, I, I am grateful that I'm counted as one who is cared for and cares for you, and um, was included in this memorial tonight. So. Um, Thank you for uh, allowing me to share. Thank you, Patrice. Love you. Yeah, I'm coming over there to you shortly, lady. I see your eyes going up. <laughs> I'm coming after you. <laughs> but I'll give you a minute. Okay. Michelle, would you like to share something? Talking to me? Oh, yes, you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, th I thought I did all my sharing when I did the video, but that's all right. Well, okay. All right. No, 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 no. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so let's talk about that conversation we had about the video and the music I selected. Um, so I made sure I selected a, a, a music with the video. That ain't church music. <laughs> it's a celebration of who, who my uncle was 
and all the times I remember being with him in different situations, you know, growing up, whether it was cookouts, parties, whatever it was. Um, also share with my aunt, like one of the main things I remember when I used to visit them in Florida is it, it was a relaxing vacation. We didn't really go anywhere. We just kind of hung around the house. But somehow I think he felt like I needed that just to hang around the house and talk and watch TV and spend time together. And uh, just listening to all of you say we could talk about anything. He and I could talk about anything too. Um, and it's been like that all my life that I've known him, which I've known him all my life. Uh, uh, was when I was a teenager and I'd spend time at the house with him and Sharon, or, you know, as I got older, it, it just, the, the atmosphere, the comfort, the conversation was the same. I was always comfortable just talking to him about anything. And, uh, it's been a while since I actually seen him, um, Probably like four or five years because I moved to North Carolina. But uh, the last time I saw him, he, I just, I'm just going to remember the smile on his face. Uh, and again, the conversation we had and, and uh, I'm going to love him and miss him for always. So thank you, auntie. <laughs> Jackie. That's Rachel, but I already know it ain't Rachel, but it ain't Jamie either. It's Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, feel like sharing? Got it. <clears throat> Jackie, are, are you still there? Okay, maybe she'll come back. Wait a second, there we go. Um, I'm trying to figure out what would happen. Oh, here's another one. Okay. Um, I give you a minute to breathe. Hey, oh, would you like to say something? Banzel, Ban. You got, got it. Did you say yes or no? Yes, I Anne is going to get everybody else mute their phones, please. Thank you. Okay, go there. We're not hearing you. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. There's no that there's no volume coming in. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go, Earl. Okay, uh, she might just need to unmute. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. 
How about great, you? Great, great. Uh, no complaints for me. I'm blessed. No complaints. Need to put my glasses on if I want to see though. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you need to do. I don't have any help there to give there. Are they are they using it from their phone or are they on the computer? I don't know. I'm gonna go to the next person while she figures it out. While I have you on here, would you like to share something? Yeah, you know, I I was fortunate enough to talk to him probably about two weeks before he passed. Uh, and the last thing that I got to tell him was that I loved him. So I, I'm just thankful that I got a chance to talk to him. Uh, thankful for what he's done for me in my life. Uh, he's done a lot for me. Some things I, I would never forget. Uh, thankful for him welcoming me into the family and always continue to uh, keep me in his conversation and in, in, in the family. So I'm just thankful that I had the opportunity and the blessing to actually meet him. Uh, to watch sports with him, <laughs> to, to listen to him go in the kitchen looking for snacks. <laughs> and and, and after, after he realized all the snacks are going, you hear him mm, and just walk out. <laughs> so I just look back on all those memories, man, and just laugh and be thankful uh, for the time that we had to share while, we, while he was here. Thank you. Yes, Mercy. Okay. What's going on, Mace? What's up, bro? Man, how you doing, brother? You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. That is. Uh huh. Hey, boy, you hit the note. You hit it right on the head with them snacks, boy. Yes, sir, man. (laughs) Well, I'm saying, like, the world would end if he didn't get a snack. What you saying? Listen, two o'clock in that morning. Oh, that, oh. <laughs> oh man, that ump man a lot. When you say ump, boy, that get out of the way. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> oh wow. Yes. Yeah, hey, I still got snacks in my snacks and sodas right here in my pantry right now from him. I still got them in there. <laughs> okay. And he leave them wherever he go. Here's about it now. Here's about them <laughs> oh, snacks <man>. now. <laughs> and, and you know the uh the, the wild thing about it was, was that I was with him the night that he uh, found out that he had diabetes because we was mm-hmm. watching, we was at watching basketball. We was mm-hmm. at a basketball game watching and he kept complaining about his vision. And so we went over to, uh, we went over to the uh, VA clinic. Mommy met us up there and that's when it came out that he had diabetes. Lord knows, like, I thought his world had ended right there. I remember that. <laughs> like them Dunkin' Donuts? What? I remember <laughs> I remember. I thought it bro, had ended for him right there. Oh, <laughs> like, man. Thanks out, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember, boy. He got to, he'll find a way to get it. And it, hey, you couldn't I stop know. him. Yep. Couldn't stop him. <laughs> no, they couldn't. No, they couldn't at all. <laughs> no, no, no snacks. Yeah, you got to remember that. You got If there's anything I'm going to remember about him, is them snacks, man. <laughs> Yeah, you're Seriously. right. Let's <laughs> say hey, it was a way of life. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. Stacy, would you like to share? Okay, I will. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, it's good to see Harris's family and friends and all of us gathered together tonight. <clears throat> Um, so I met Paris, I guess in 2000, uh, God, what year was it? 2006, I think in Florida. Um, and we became friends right away and we have stayed friends. And I think the last time I spoke to him through texting was, um, maybe Christmas day or the day after Christmas. And he, you know, he had told me that he was home. And he was feeling pretty weak. Um, But, you know, he was more concerned about me because I had coronavirus. And, you know, that since he had found out, he had been texting me all the time, you know, just checking in with me pretty much every day to make sure I was okay. And, you know, I knew he wasn't doing that well. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so like him to be 
so unself-centered, you know, and, and caring about how I was doing. And I was home, you know, I wasn't hospitalized or anything. I wasn't feeling too good, but, <laughs> um, but, you know, we, you know, we, we had our friendship that lasted 15 years and, um, you know, when he moved back up to DC, we continued that friendship. And every time he would come to Florida, um, he'd come by my house or we would meet at a restaurant, you know, we would eat, always see each other and he loved when I cooked him dinner in my home. And I used to always tell him every time he was here, you know, I feel like, like God's in my house with me. You know, he just had that spiritual presence about him. Um, and we just always had really good talks and I will always miss him, but always be grateful that, um, that he picked me to be his friend, you know, and he used to call me his girl. And I love that. There's just something very warm and comforting, um, about him. I love the way he talked and what we talked about. And uh, I think one of my favorite things was the unique way that Paris packed for a trip when he would drive down here and <laughs> throwing all of his clothes in the backseat of his car. That just always cracked me up to say, show me how you packed. And uh, he always would. It was funny. But anyway, um, this is a beautiful way to honor a wonderful person. And uh, Paris, if you're here and you're listening, and I think you are. I believe you are. I love you. All right, I'm going to go and mute. But thanks for calling on me. I was going to get to it eventually. <laughs> thanks for hosting this, Sharon, and I love you. I love you too, Sarah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Jackie, you ready now? Um, sorry about that. Good evening, okay. family and friends. Um, no, I don't really have a lot to say. Just, I love them and I, I love you all and I'm just enjoying listening all the great things that are being said. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Uh, Jackie. Uh, Jackie, can you hear me? Yeah. Hold up, Paris. Where are you? This is Maceo. Oh, Maceo. <laughs> See how y'all all sound alike? <laughs> I, I just want to ask her one question. Hey, when you gonna start aging? <laughs> oh my goodness! Thank you so yeah, I'm, much. I'm, you I'm with you on that, Maceo. I'm with you on that. She still <laughs> looks the same. You, you look, the, no doubt. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Aunt Jackie. From when I was what, 12, 13, 15. <laughs> Is that Jackie Candace's mother? <laughs> I could beat you on that, Mason, when we were 16. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, I think she got the same smile, everything. Wow. Love you, too. Love you. Love you, too. Hey. What's up, darling? Tamara, Tammy, T. You want to share? <laughs> Y'all yeah, want to um, go in here? Um... We're here already. Are we finished with um, the friend sharing? And we're ready to move to the next part? Well, there are, let me look at the screen again. Yeah. There are, if I'm not mistaken, there are one, two, <laughs> three more folks on the screen. With their hands raised. And, and, and he didn't answer me. So she would either make full or else. And they're with their hands raised wanting to speak. I don't know. But but regardless, um, I was I was just calling on them because they weren't. But got OK, OK, just I've been walking away. So I want to make sure where we are. If we need to just get started to the next part. That's all. OK. Family got included in some of this, though. So back oh, up. the family did. Wait, hold up. Hold okay, I'll okay. text you. <laughs> well, I guess we got to rotate. See, were you saying yes or no? They're spanky. They're saying no. Okay, spanky, spanky, spanky. Did he just didn't take his hand down? His hand must be tired about now. But um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looks like I've got Marquita. Langston 
and Lita and Rose. So the names up. Langston, would you like to share? I'll get him. And we can just all go in at once and come back up. Everybody, want, I mean, you have to unmute yourself if you are. Go ahead, Langston. You must be your boy. Yeah. I cannot hear you, Langston. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody, friends and family. Uh, my name is Langston Amadi, son of Patrice Daniels. Um, you know, I want to say thank you, Aunt Sharon, for arranging this amazing service. Thank you for being you. I was just speaking with my mom um, a couple days ago, and I asked, you know, who all was there at my birth? And my mom definitely said you were in attendance. So thank you for being a very good friend to my mom. Um, and our family, I, I really appreciate you. Um, shout out to Uncle Butch. I appreciate your energy, Uncle Butch. Um, I remember going to DC and I stayed with him. Um, this was maybe five or six years ago, but I had a blast, I had a lot of fun. Um, he showed me around the whole city and everywhere we went, there was like, you know, a story for him to share, a memory that he could pass to me. And it was great. It was one of my first times in the city, one of my first times outside of Atlanta for any extended amount of time. So I had a great time. Um, I miss my uncle. Um, he's amazing. He is incredible. Every All the stories people are sharing about the positive energy that he has and you know, has always had is true. <laughs> I can definitely attest to that. You know, always has a smile, always has something good to say, always has a fun memory to pass on to the next generation. So I want to say thank you, Uncle, for being you. And uh, I pray that you rise to the highest heights of heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Langston. You look great, Langston. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's why I said I hadn't done it. Did I, did I ask Rose? <laughs> hi, hi, Asha. Hi, Mark. Can you How are you? Hear you? Okay. Rose. Uh -oh. Go ahead, Rose. I met Paris, let's see, I want to say 2011. And I guess I'm kind of surprised because I haven't heard anyone from the You Know What To Do crew speak. So that's how I met him. <laughs> at the Elks Club <laughs> with the crew. And I have to say, I am enjoying this. This is so beautiful. Spanky, you got it going on. <laughs> I loved him. And Patrice, I love what you had to say. Um, Paris came back from West Palm Beach one time. I can't remember when it was. And he uh, stopped where I was living at the time in Tampa. And my daughter and I, we fed him. He didn't go anywhere. He ate snacks. He watched basketball the whole weekend. <laughs> yes, he loved his sport. He was a good dancer. And uh, he came to my mom's home going in 2015. I thought that was special. Um, Y'all maybe remember his best friend also that he grew up with, Lou who passed last year, a whole year ago in January, his best bud, Lou Harris. Yep. Anyhow, I just, this is amazing. I couldn't get in and then Nikki, Nicole, sent me the correct ID because I had given up at 640. So I missed the video or the pictures or whatever the girl said she showed. But I just want to say thank you I don't really believe the people end, you know, the body goes into the earth, the soul has gone to heaven, but y'all call him Butch. I knew him as Paris. Paris will live forever in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Van, did you get it? Get, get your, your video, I mean, your audio together?
is happening on the earth. Okay. Oh no, Banzel. Oh, Benita light lit up. Do you want to say something, Benita? Okay. I guess not. Maybe that was an accident. All right. I Marquita, and then I'm done, Nicole. Marquita, how about you? Would you like to share? Okay. I guess I'm going to hand it back to you then, Nicole. Mm -hmm. I guess it didn't work. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the video. I heard my name. Um, Paris and them have just arrived and they're coming. They're looking at daddy right now. Okay. So that's what's going on with his camera. Um, and so are we finished with that? The friends and I guess family combined Hello. collection? I think so. because I've asked everybody and everybody that wanted to say mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And the couple people didn't have, we couldn't get their video, not the video, their audio together. So I don't know how to do that. Okay. So All right. So the next part after that um, are the readings of the poems. So, mommy, your your poem. Are you reading it? Oh. No, because uh, you think I memorized it. I don't have a poem. No, so you don't have it with you? <laughs> okay, I'll read it. Oh, gee, really curious. Talk about being prepared. Um, you can go by state to copy. And then let Candy know after this, her story is the same. She went outside. He looks so at peace. There's no lesson. In loss, only blessings. There's an element of success that only God knows. And we only see when our eyes, when our eyes, he does close. No one knows the day or the hour, our last smile or our last scour. With our limited sight, we think we know till here comes the shade and we got to go. As we soothe our hearts and wipe our tears, we'll sit and reflect over all the years. We'll see the blessings that yet veiled were taught. All the do's and the don'ts, all the oughtas and all the nots, and the mm, mm, mm along the way. We'll give thanks for the lessons in view as we hear the words that were distinctly you. Ring our ears with the mm, 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 and it do what it do. The codes that the silence, the codes that the silence really did say were think starters designed to, um, to mark our way. To help us through and to think another heavy day, we'll repeat your gestures when we don't have a clue. We'll realize you imparted in us more than we knew. What we thought was a robbery was a fair exchange after all. For even in our sobbery, our uh, yeah, sobbery, we're becoming forced to stand tall. <laughs> As you sit up high and look down low in awe, you'll get to see us see what you saw. You may smile and nod with your head on your chin, knowing you left behind a lot way down deep within. Thank you for making us work and think for dismissing the option of choosing to sink, for encouraging us to stay the course and accept God's plan without remorse. For each, for we each here have a path, unbeknownst to others that may match their dreams or ours doers. Yet it matches God's plan for the lessons we're to learn because those heavenly wings, will be enabled to earn.
that's that's that book poem. Okay. I guess I gotta read the next one. Give me a moment, Mr. Yeah, I gotta find it. Maybe Paris will read the next one. Is he here? Oh, you took me close. Will you? Oh, no. I, I'll read it. I'll read it. Well. Um, we, we're going to have a song. Okay. Um, she's going to log into Zoom because she's a little shy to come stand right here. So she wants to do it over there. So mommy, I need you to let her in the Zoom. Nothing's showing yet. Nothing's showing yet? Hi, and thank you for coming. I'm Olivia. Um, my, uh, what's it called? Paris's son's daughter. <laughs> um, I'm Tynese. I'm Paris's uh, granddaughter from Paris first. Um, I'm the second eldest. And yeah. <laughs> So this is the time that you have a moment as family to speak. Oh, okay. You want to speak? Okay. Kind of got to step back a little bit. Hi, everyone. Thank you for um, showing your faces. It's uh, amazing to hear like how much you impact you all collectively. Um, I'm Nazim, daughter of, I mean, son of Nicole. Um, <laughs> I just appreciate all the love you guys have shown my grandfather and thank you guys for, um, for coming out in the ways that you can. I think the best way I can describe my grandfather is the first person that can wear all white horses through a muddy patch and they still be clean like they're brand new. So um, I said thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nazim. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Chinese. They got some here. So while they're still getting the song together, I'll go ahead and finish the next part. After that, we'll be ready. Oh, you ready, Candy? No, she said that part, and then we'll be ready. Oh, okay. I want this to start this off by greeting you all with what is probably the most undeniably needed entity at this moment. Peace. Be it of mind, body, or soul or even a more beautiful combination of them all. I wish everyone present true peace. I want to impress the importance of one word to all of you today. That word is impact. I choose that word for the express purpose of stressing the intensity of my message. Impact implies force a collision of two separate entities as often an intersection with an interaction, pardon, with our beloved deceased could have easily turned into. Let's all acknowledge one thing here and now, he's a purse. Even in death, we must acknowledge one never ceases to be them. Just in the different state of being, hate it or love it, purses are dynamic people and undeniably hell on the heart. This man is the direct origin of many who are present today. 
We represent multiple generations of males and females with his blood pumping through our veins and with actions shaped by his very existence. I won't presume to know how everyone present is feeling or thinking. I don't know your truth in regards to the deceased. What I know is that we're all individuals and by being so, we're entitled to our personal feelings. Who is one person to tell another how one's words or actions have or haven't impacted their lives in any way? If I'm being completely realistic, I could rightfully tell myself the level of impact my words and actions will or won't have on another. We often get caught up in our many assumptions and in doing so, we change the course of our interactions. Refraining, forcing, diluting, shortening, all in all, understanding that to deny someone the option of being genuinely impacted by you in any way is doing a disservice to everyone. It's an even greater disservice to discredit a person for the impact that they've had on your life. For when we are impacted by something, by definition, it has been an influence over us in some way. So it is with this man, hated or loved, he's impacted each of us, every one of us in our lives. And what we fail to realize as conscious beings is that at the point of impact, the power of that impact is now transferred to the impacted. It's, conti it's continuance in power and governance over us in any form then becomes our own responsibility. More importantly, it becomes our doing, our own doing. If we choose to hold on to the negative, then the negative will drive our lives and fill us with bitterness, despair, anger, and hate. If we take the negative, live, learn, and move on to the process, progress and produce positivity with wisdom and understanding, of what we're doing and why, then it has served a greater purpose. Either way, it all seemed, seemed from one thing, the impact someone had on us. I say all that to say, I'm Spartan, I say all that to impact the understanding that no matter how many of us may feel, the fact is we are who we are in some part due to this man. Even, in, even if you're the boyfriend or girlfriend or a grandchild that has had small dealings, if any, over the years, we must look deeper to the surface, perspective clouded by emotion and acknowledge the fact of matter, which is that he impacted our lives. The way the way the grandson, pardon, I lost my space. The way he treated his wife impacted the way his son later treated women in life. thus affecting the way the grandson later treats women. And be clear, this can be for better or worse. Every occurrence in life can be a lesson or a blessing. As I said, it rests on us to determine the direction of the execution of that knowledge. It's still a lesson, but it's also a blessing. Everyone is present because they have some form of relation to him. And it can be traced back to someone that has had direct contact with him. And good or bad, those interactions shape future dealings, some of which are still affecting us to this very day. You may have never met this man, and yet you now date his son. The very moment of the word his son says or an action he produced changes something about your life. You have been impacted by his own actions or words, even if his son has chosen to live his life on his own terms. The most extreme, on the most extreme opposite end of the spectrum on which he lived. If that life choice had even a tiny piece of nudging from his father's actions, it now becomes a product of him. So therefore we owe him. 
I would never promote disrespect of the dead in any form. And I'm not asking for anything to be glossed over, forgotten, embellished, or downplayed. Simple acknowledgement is all that's owed. My uncle gave me a lesson the other day, and it holds meaning here. No matter how much we wish it's so, personal feelings will never change facts. And the facts are this man has given us all something to be thankful for in life, in the form of a path of life. Either we cherish what we have and fight to maintain it, or we despair, despise it and fight to change it. There's honor in either choice, just make one. Life is too short to be pressed to too short and too precious to deny your own reality and forsake what is dutiful for us to honor. So with hopefully a better understanding from my rambling, I ask this one act of homage from everyone. I call for a moment of silence. Yes, I admit it's unofficial. It's an unofficial event. Nevertheless, I request that we send out a prayer for peace thanks, love, and honor for the man we've all assembled here for. And let our length of silence be a full 76 seconds of silence and comp compilations, contemplations in a positive form. One second for every year he was alive, we owe it to him because the moment he was born, his existence added energy to this world that was destined to impact our lives in some way, somehow. We'll take that moment right now. He lived his life on his own terms, and I have to believe he loved us only as he knew. No one can give what they don't have. We shouldn't disregard that which was given simply because it wasn't always to our liking. Whether it's the way we wanted it or not is irrelevant. The facts are something was given, and we all have something to take out of what, we, of what was given. Cherish that, respect that for him. Honor what is by improving upon it and maintaining it. From a young man that has had a very hard life dealings, but has been heavily impacted by him, I send my condolences to our family, friends, and all those who give us support. I honor you, granddad, rest in power, and may your soul now know peace. I love you, Michael Purse Jr. Okay. So that's what comes next. Is that it? Yeah. So, it's our favorite. Well, that's what's next. So, is she ready? When she's ready, let's go. And she's ready now for the song. Did you 
Oh, you have to unmute. I, I 
got it right here. Go ahead. Introduce her. This is Butch's great niece, his sister Jackie's granddaughter, my daughter, Kamaya Perry. She's who just did the selection that we heard. Oh. You can't be that tall. All righty, so the next part are the acknowledgments. And then Maceo will finish with a closing prayer. Um, surprise, Maceo. Mm -hmm. I say we're going to do the acknowledgments, and then after that, you finish. Maceo? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. 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 She didn't want to get out my arms. I don't want her to scream. What happened to Nicole? What happened to Nikhil? What happened to the what? Nikhil. Nikhil left. Because here we only can have a certain amount of people, so we had to rotate out. And Paris came towards the end. Nikhil was here before, so Nikhil left. It's okay. He can Take sing to himself. Home. Well, I don't know if he's made it home yet to be on Zoom. You know, they oh. were driving. So oh. he's in transit right now. So if he doesn't sing tonight, it's okay. He can do it tomorrow. Oh, okay. 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 So for a sake of time, because we have to be finished at eight, we'll go ahead and do the acknowledgments because we'd like to give thanks to those who sent flowers, those who were at the James Place condominiums. They were very kind, very thoughtful, and they were very, they blessed very much. We um, were able to buy peace lilies as an offering from daddy. I'm giving to everyone in the house like every household, so they can have something to continue to grow and love on as they should and we should in daddy's memory. We were also able to get um, Mr. Long. He guessed us with a beautiful rose spread. Um, you want to put the baby down? She won't let go. No, it's okay. It's okay. 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 Also, we have uh, flowers that were sent to us from the place where Daddy worked, uh, James Place Condos. He's worked everywhere he's worked. So actually, I'm going to close it out because I think we have to get ready to wrap it up. Uh, I have Paris and Nicole. And our brother Maceo is officiating. Michael, Michael wanted to leave because he just said it was, it was a bit too much, which I get it. Um, we all thank you for, for taking part in it. At the same time, what Paris has done, some of you know him as Butch, some of you know him as Sink. I've known him as Sink, Butch, and as Paris. And I've been able to watch his transition to become Paris. I look at all the people that he's helped. I look at the 23 grandkids, six great grandkids, and the five of us siblings. While we may not all share the same bloodline in a sense, but it's nurture or nature, we are a direct reflection and should be grateful for what he gave us because we're able to give y'all and our kids a, a better life and a way of living. Um, Paris, little Paris is a, is, a, is a better version. He taught me to be a better version. He taught Nicole to be a better version. So that's why our families are big. <laughs> <laughs> they are big. <laughs> Mute your mic. Mute your mic. No, I'm just like, no, but our families are big. And again, we need to do continue doing our part. And we need to, we shouldn't have to come together on a Zoom call to take the time to say to each other that we love each other because you never know which promise. And you know that you know we can go at any time. 
I've had the pleasure of all my life, 50 years, from the bootleggers, from NA o overdosing, back alleys, passed out. I've seen him knock people out. I buffed floors with him in school when he was working. We've done a lot together and I owe my life to him. He saved my life at one time. So in the end, I just had to be able to tell him that I was proud of him and he said he was proud of us and all he really wanted at the end was to know that he wasn't forgotten, that he mattered to his son Maceo, to his son Michael, to Nicole, to Paris, to myself. And I just told him, I said, you did a good job. Look at all that you created. So now we have to take it and go further and do more with what we have and appreciate our differences and our love for one another. That's my ace boom coon right there. And I'm out. Thank you. That's it, Maceo. Take it over. Mm -hmm. Go on you, old man. Uh, oh, we have one more. Uh, another one brought to us by James Place Condos. More flowers at where he worked at. Uh, so I'll show you. You open. Oh. No, that's what it says. Okay. That's fine. Okay. It usually has a name. It ain't that. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Go ahead, Mason. Oh, I'm, I thought you were closing. I'm what? what you you close it out with a, a prayer, prayer or whatever you want to do, bro. You got it. Well, I, I agree real quick. You know, we talk about what a father and what a dad. He came to be a father, but you know, he lived a life for us and he turned into a dad. He was dad. That's all I can say. Everybody has said everything about our dad that's correct. He has his ups, downs, goods, and not so good. But one thing about it, he was dad. Anybody could be a father. It only take one or two to be a dad. He was a dad, he was a friend, he was everything. He was just that. So whatever moment you have right now, take all the good, keep it with you, take it with you forever. It's yours, learn from it, keep it, take it in life. This is what granddad would do for me. This is what granddaddy wanted me to do. This is what dad, take it edify you let it edify you take it with you don't let it go to waste like he said uncle ken said we are that legacy let it continue there's enough of us so i thank you father i thank you for this time i thank you that we are able to do something in this time in this world i thank you that the time was made for us. I thank you for your inter eternal grace. I thank you for your eternal love. I thank you for your eternal strength, your comfort, your compassion, and most of all, your love. But your love is not a word. Your love is a person. And that love is Jesus Christ. I thank you for him. I thank you that all we have to do is call upon the name for whatever the need or the desire. And I thank you that you cover this family, strengthen us, comfort us, keep us safe. Those of us have journeyed from a distance. Father, be the driver. Be that angel on the steering wheel. Guide and direct. Keep us as one. Keep us as a family. And the friends that we have are considered family because that's who dad was. So I thank you and I seal this 
in the precious name of the gift. And that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Maceo, for that particular prayer. It was on time, as usual. Our time here has come to an end. Um, so they will end the Zoom viewing of Daddy. But if you all care to stay on and continue in sharing, you're able to. Um, we will have the Zoom going, I think, with the music. Um, and we will also pick up tomorrow at 1.30 with the Zoom and do the ceremony at the burial so that you'll be able to take part in that as well. Okay, Ms. Um, Paris, Nicole. Yes. Um, Darren. Yes. And all the other children. I just want to tell y'all that me and Jose have y'all in our prayers and that y'all be strengthened by the Lord to become stronger, wiser. I hear a voice. In Jesus' name. Okay, this is Francine. Thank you, Francine. It is, girl. All right, love y'all. Love you too. Thank you. All y'all, peace. Thank you too, Jose. All right. We won't. All righty, so we're going to end this part here so they can do what they need to do. And we love you all, and we'll see you all later. Bye, guys. Stay safe. Okay. Um, I, won't, I won't turn it off until we're done. How about that? Um, Can you say, Uncle Ken, you still there? What? Yes, I'm still here. Oh. Hey, they, hey, they left you out. They left you out with the top dress. Okay, I, I just gotta let them know that. We should take a look at now. <laughs> well, thank you. you can't they, they, they must didn't know. They forgot I'll about you. Okay, yeah. You're in the top five. Saying maybe you can um, That's just right. get them to help. You well, did you get my text? They're going with them. Um, Maceo. Yeah. I saw something pop up. But I was on the. Okay, with we'll answer whenever you get time. What is the plan for what you're trying to do? You take one home. Yeah, okay. Cool. To everyone, I am getting ready to leave. My belly is calling me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> I am too, Ken, but I'm not prepared. Oh, <laughs> I have to eat before it gets too late. Otherwise, it'll just sit like a brick. <laughs> I might be doing more than there. So. Hey, man, over there eating. Man, over there getting, getting it in. I don't know what's okay. wrong with her video. I mean, her uh, audio. Oh, where no, but I was going to say, hey, man. Yeah. Hello, Michelle. Hey, how you I'm doing? doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good for an older man. Ha <laughs> ha! Cool, cool, Ken. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you for what you said. That was awesome. Oh, well, hey, You're amazing. Dude. I could have said more, but uh, it, it would have taken me away from here. <laughs> oh, gotcha. yeah. We go all the way back to 1979. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Oh. Yes, that's, it was, he was always part of my family. Wow. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> long time, isn't it? Oh, very <laughs> long time. Well, Paris I mean, and Nicole, yeah, I think, I mean, were only was, two years old. <laughs> I, was a, I was a junior in high school, I guess. That was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, it was 1979, it was a long time ago. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hi, oh, we're two years old. You're absolutely Patrice, right. hello. How are you? Hi, hi, Kenneth. I was just waiting to jump in. It's been a long time. It's good to hear your voice. And it's good to hear yours and to see you as well. 
This is nice. This is nice. Well, I'm so when are you planning on coming down to visit us again? I don't know. Pro maybe for spring break or um, I think pro possibly spring break. Mm. Possibly. And condolences to you on your father's passing as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. This was a, a beautiful standoff. Um, yes, it is. I could appreciate how much, how much duty, how much uh, regard, how regard for tradition, regard for what it takes to to honor your elders by everyone coming forth and 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 being willing to be in the company, whether it's strained or or not just to be in each other's company and to do the next right thing, which is to send your spirit off in, a, in an honorable way. I well, know. you know that old adage, where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. And there's some definite strong wills in this purse family. So oh. <laughs> make sure it happens. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we'll not take no for an answer. So. Okay. Everybody suited up and showed up. It was very nice. Well, I shall say good night to everyone. Good night, Kenneth. Take good care. Night. Love you all. Oh, thanks a whole bunch. Up to Thank you. you. Blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Sharon. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Auntie. My, listen, my favorite memory, Patrice, uh -huh. is you and a few other ladies chiming in. How long has it been? 27. <laughs> yeah, every year was another year added on. Yep. <laughs> Which didn't know nothing about that, though. <laughs> not for his ears. No, sure. was not for his ears. On a spirit level, I'm sure he got the message, though. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep. I see somebody I haven't heard from in a coon's age. Dion, how you doing? Is she there? You there, Dion? I saw her. She's muted. Okay. Hmm. okay. All right, Miss Van, you started the repass without all of us. Yes, she did. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> I, I have not met you, Miss Van, but working you started it. repass without us. <laughs> You ain't even paying us no attention. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh -uh. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, can not hear us either. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Ask to unmute. We will see. That's the heart. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we talk about you. <laughs> To say you started repass without us. She is oblivious. No. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> Something going on with her audio and she's yeah. just chopping down. Okay. And didn't offer right. anybody anything. Okay. <laughs> oh well, oh well, oh well. Family. Yeah. How you doing, Kaya? I'm doing okay. Family. Okay. I didn't see Jakaya. Where's Jakaya? I'm here. Oh, you have your camera off. Okay. It's okay. I love you. Love you. Yeah. I saw you last night. Happy birthday, beautiful. Thank you. Hey, Aunt Van. Birthday. You got to unmute. It's not working for her. Kind of old time. Mommy's going to give you my number so you can call and talk to me. I can do that. I love you. And hi, uh, hi Patrice. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, Nicole. Hey, baby, you going to have to shut it down. Oh, you are the best He'll be right back. And I asked him. So I don't really know. You know. Okay. So I know that his like I, I just watched him and told him how I wanted it. Okay. So, uh, you know what? Me. He didn't get to see all of the um of the um video. 
Hi, Ma. Hi, everyone. Okay. This is from Galaxy 20. Hi, guys. Sorry. Oh, to Radia. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've been doing that. Oh, I would have asked you if you wanted to say something. Uh, I, I did, but I was too shy. I'm sorry. Since oh. when? <laughs> Nadi knows crying. It's been such an amazing and humbling experience with all these great yeah. people there. It was just overwhelming. Sorry. Okay, take your outside. Yeah, I'm just going to go in the Okay, there you go. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, come in. No sounds going to be. All right, I turned the camera around. Can you okay. see it? Yes, you can. Okay. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Seems to me, girl, you know I've done all I can. Be a big stone and a bottle. Yeah. Why me, babe? I'm easy like Sunday morning. The moment I wake up, oh, I'm baby. I say a little Right there, Patrice. Um, if we could stream it from the 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my thing as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Website and watch it there. The service and everything else. You gotta pack it up. Um, can you put, can you put your link? Can you put your post on a share so it can be shared? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and then you can share it with whoever. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ivan. Can't hear you. Guys, beautiful service. Thank you. Thank you too, Rose. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Gotta go, guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my little Darren. That little Darren, I love him. Yeah. All right. But I love the Yeah. But he was the same. Good night. Good night, Sharon. Good night. Good night. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you. Okay. Thank you. Mwah. To both of you. Smooches. Yes, indeed. I don't know who this iPhone is down at the bottom, but good night, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love you, Van. I don't know what's going on. I can't hear you, but it's okay. It's okay. Just, just know. Know that you are hugged. Royally, yes, indeedy. Mm. Okay, good night. <laughs>